Hey guys, I'm starting a new vlog today. I'm laughing because my boyfriend's in the background again. It's stressing me out. But um, I thought I'd start off with some book posts. I've been so lucky recently to get um, a lot of proofs that are coming in for March and like February and March next year. So I've got lots of Christmas reading to do. Um, I've been really unwell, so that's why I've taken a break. But it's the weekend tomorrow and I'm going to chill out, um, meet some a friend for like an outdoor coffee. And we just got news that our city is going to be in tier two, which I'm sure that doesn't mean a lot of people who watch from different places in the world, but um, basically a lot is remaining the same and we're not really going to be able to do a lot, um, which is depressing to be honest. But yeah, anyway, I will show you the books that I was sent. Um, the first one I've been really excited for and I didn't know if I was going to get a copy of it and it's now Frizzell's memoir and um, the panic years now Frizzell is a writer and a journalist it's blurred by Baze, Pandora and Dolly um and this is dates doubts and the mother of all decisions it's a book about motherhood um like your late 20s early 30s and the idea of having children so she refers to the panic years as the bit where you're like trying to manage all of those decisions I read Nell's writing and I also follow her on Twitter because she's a huge um like cold water swimmer and she swims like in her local um she goes like skinny dipping in her local rivers um and she like documents it on Twitter so that's why I was keen to read it because I really hope that she mentions that in here this was due out like earlier this year um but it was delayed because of uh, the pandemic but it says raw hilarious and honest an arm around the shoulder and a campaign to start a conversation about this is a memoir, feminist text, and a piece of social commentary. Love the proof cover, love the colours. Um, so yeah, I'm going to read this probably next month. It's out in February. And that came in from Penguin, did I say that? And the next one I got is one I'm so excited for, and I saw this on... CJ's books I'm excited to read in 2021 and then literally went on the list and saw what the UK dates are out for but the US cover of this is so much nicer I like so 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 much nicer um but this is Tori Peters Detransition Baby so I'm gonna read off of this so I don't get it wrong but it's a unique trans take on love motherhood and the exes you can't quit So it's a portrait of three women, trans and cis, who wrestle with motherhood and family making destined to be a 21st century classic. I'm not sure if the author is trans. I'm going to look that up actually because I think that would be interesting. But they have written two novellas before this and this is their first full length novel. So I think it will be um, really beautiful and potentially quite sad. Oh, it's blurred by Claire Lombardo who wrote The Most Fun We'll Ever Had, which I mentioned in my bookshelf video that people were talking about. So yeah, that's really exciting. I will add those to my proof shelf that I um, keep all my ones on. And I was wondering if you guys would be interested in me doing a video this, like the end of this year about all the proofs I have that are coming out like in the spring that I'm excited to read and maybe then you guys could comment on which ones you like want me to read and review so you could pre-order them if that is of interest to you. Um, but yeah, I've got work today and then I'll probably catch up with you on the weekend when I'm going for an arctic dip. Good morning campers, it is day god knows what of the um of 2020. It's another weekend inside, it's actually such a beautiful day as you can see. I'm blinded by it. Um so I'm gonna go on a walk in a bit. My boyfriend's just out getting croissants and coffee to start our Saturday right and you can hear my washing machine going my era is here ready um but what have i done this morning i just finished pizza girl by jean young frazier which i think i started in my last vlog i just finished it for like a hundred of the 190 pages i was completely indifferent like i was really considering dnfing i was like end of the year getting to stuff and then it suddenly got so so sad <clears throat> 
It's about, as the title suggests, an, an unnamed narrator, pizza girl who is 18, pregnant, really unhappy with her life working in a pizza shop and she like sort of gets infatuated by one of her pizza delivery people that she delivers to, this woman. Um, but it's also a lot about grief, dealing with grief, um, alcoholism, uh, intergenerational trauma. I did like it. The more I'm thinking about the themes, the more I'm like, yeah, that was an interesting exploration. But it just took, for a novella, well, it's not a novella, but like for a very short book, it took a lot for me to get into it. So yeah, middle of the road for me. There's also one really problematic comment where, like, we don't really hear a lot from many characters. I thought I folded down the page. Obviously didn't. But basically the um, protagonist is like talking to someone and she's like, oh yeah, I miss my grandma too or something. She's like, oh, I didn't know my grandma. All I knew is that she hated black people. And then the conversation just moves on. We never hear about it again or anything else. And there's no other black characters. Like, I remember just getting a bad hit recently with the <laughs> racist books, but that just seemed like completely unnecessary to me. So yeah, I wasn't into that, but yeah, not sure. Still collecting thoughts. What else am I gonna do today? I'm going, I'm about to sit on that bed with my iPad and Apple Pencil and draw my thumbnail for my most recent vlog. Um, the one you would have seen before this. I think I have another book. Um, I have another like, what, what are they called? You know what I mean, like the cover image to do. But I will be starting Madeline Ryan's A Room Called Earth today, which I'm really excited about. It's a proof coming in from Scribd. I organized all my proofs last night in like chronological order so I know what I want to read when. Um, and it's a debut from an Australian autistic writer and it says a young woman gets ready to go to a party, she feels overwhelmed, she leaves, then she returns, minutely attuned to the people who come into her view and alternate, alternating between alienation and profound connection, hilarious, self-aware and painfully honest. At the end of the night, she shows us something radical about love, loss and something and the need to belong. So yeah, I think that'll be really, really good. I can hear my boyfriend coming in the door now and he's going to think I'm talking to him. So I will update you when I've read um, some of this. It's for the vlog. <laughs> Good morning, happy campers. It's Sunday, I'm just making a pot of tea as I always do. And for some bizarre reason, I dreamt about pancakes. It mustn't touch my nose. Someone just commented on one of my videos saying they would love to watch my videos if I touch my nose too much. So I'm gonna try and not do that, even though my nose is perpetually itchy. So who knows? Anyway, I'm just making some pancakes. Here, you would have seen last night I made banana bread. I don't know why I'm on some kind of existential crisis baking vibe. I'm sure lots of you have participated in that in uh, the various stages of 2020. Just um, stewing some fruit to go with it. And um, then I'm going to talk to you about books. So I've had a bit of a dilemma. My book reading last night. Um, I spoke to my gals and my boys and they informed me about what I should do and I'm going to tell you what I did so I'll get back to you once I've done the whole pancake thing I am ready for the day you can see my boyfriend's toes in him just trying to convince him to make a video maybe you'll see the video by the time this is up we've done all our chores so I was just going to chat to you about some books and what I was reading last night because um, I started, which I told you I was starting, A Room Called Earth, and oh, I really want to love it, it's a debut, it's Australian, but um, I'm really jarred by the voice, so it's like first person, present tense, like inside the head of one person set over one night, and I'm just finding her voice like too authoritative almost, like she's just very 
set in her opinion and I don't know why it's just not I'm not driving with it. it's kind of jarring me and I asked my friend CJ who's already read this I think it came out in um, America first and she was like oh that continues the entire way through so it's not a GNF it's like a maybe I'll read it later um because yeah I'm not sure and then I asked my friends the book hotties what I should read and I sent them pictures of my shelves and Jalen from the Violet Bookcase was like oh my god I just finished The Secret Lives of Church Ladies you've got to read it so it's a collection of short stories which I thought at first I was like oh maybe I don't want that maybe I want to sink into a plot but then I was like mm, my attention's quite crap so I'll give it a go and I trust his opinion and I read the first two stories and loved them so they're all I guess I don't know oh, I don't know if they're all but they're like so far all centering around um black women and girls who are members of like church communities basically as the title suggests um and so far one was about like two women in a lesbian relationship and how or not even a relationship just like a, a lesbian situation and how they're reconciling that with their faith and then another one who were um this couple who were hooking up in a hospice car park where their mothers were both in the hospice um which was quite funny um so yeah i really i really like it so far i will keep you updated on that one and then i might come back to this later i'm gonna, gonna film some videos now and then i will um do some reading this afternoon i'm going out for a walk with a friend and i have a meeting for um like a university lecture so yeah, that's my Sunday and I will get back to you when I read something else. <laughs> ordered a roast from our like local vegan restaurant and dear holy lord, it looks so good. Got the vino, got the candles. Got the cute boyfriend. But yeah, I'm so excited to tell you also got dessert. Hello guys, it's 2.30 on a Monday. Feet my hot water bottle. Um, not really sure why I'm checking in. I haven't done much reading. I started a new audiobook called Black is the Body by Emily Bernard. It's um, a collection of essays from a black female scholar in the States talking about um, her experiences with race um, and her family. It's super, super interesting so far. Um, the first essay was all about her teaching a group of majority white students about, she's an African American literature professor talking about teaching a book that uses the N-word. And I thought it was so interesting, especially since I raised recently reading Kevin Kwan's book and using it and I also had a discussion in my university class about the reclamation of words and um sorry if you can hear that there's so much noise going on my boyfriend's giving a lecture like an online lecture to a group of people in the other room also very person just he came he's he obviously teaches at a Dutch university and he just came in to say that one of his students didn't believe that like doesn't talk like just basically said like what are you talking about he was giving a lecture on the hostile environment and came in to say what are you talking about slavery finished 400 years ago so in case anyone is under the guise that the next generation of european or british people in uh, university are all actively anti-racist there's a uh, big plot twist there so that was depressing um but what else was i talking about this audiobook's really great <laughs> and very relevant to what I'm thinking about at the moment and then I also want to read I Hate Men this week which I featured in my last vlog and I just filmed a video with all of the books I want to read by the end of the year so I'm on deadline for my application to my master's so that's stressing me out I've already cried twice today sweet and until that's over I probably won't be doing much reading to be honest but I have been audio and booking in my breaks which is nice so that's the only update there I have nothing even nice to show you it's so gloomy outside and it's a very Monday Monday but I'll get back to you when I read something later in the week that was unnecessary hi guys I literally rude I've um tried to start this video I mean it's clear my mind is in a million and one places I tried to start a clip this morning and then 
I was interrupted by a phone call from my brother. And now my whole day just proceeded to fall into chaos. I did get new glasses, they're quite cute. And I got my hair cut, not that you can really notice, but it feels nice. I've got two pairs of new glasses because I lost one. And then I thought, as backup, I'll get two, but I kind of regret not. I lost those cool square gold ones that you guys actually love. I also got these ones, which on the website look really green, but they're not. Well, they are, but maybe they just get lost in my hair. And then these big pink ones, which I have had before. But I got them in the Black Friday sale from Glasses Direct, if anyone cares. But I rate their glasses because they're quite cheap and I lose my glasses all the time. Anyway, you're not here to talk about glasses. I'm here to eat Snacker Jacks. I tell you about what I've been reading. Both. It's so dark and I need to fill my wrap up. I finished The Secret Life of Church Lady. I loved it. Agree with you, Jay. Peach Cobbler's the best story, but the last story <coughs> also made me cry so much when Eddie Levitt comes. It's about a mother and daughter and the mother's going through like um, her dementia and is obsessed with this um, like lead of this band from like the 70s and she thinks every day that he's coming to get her but it's also about like caregiving it reminded me a bit of like some of the trains of thought why are you doing that every time I fucking vlog it's so annoying I'm not baking banana bread ever again um it's about caregiving and it reminded me of the threads of in um burnt sugar a bit actually like that fraught mother-daughter relationship and I also love the one it's called like when Christian instructions for married Christian husbands and it's like set out like a guidebook of um like visiting this woman who's a she says she's not a sex worker like a I guess a mistress and like the protocol that you have to go through if you're a married Christian man and you want to visit her and I thought it was really funny and really like sharp um so I like that. Then I started and am now halfway through The Vegetarian by Hong Kong. Um, I don't know if this will go up first or the other video, but in my end of year reading plans, I mentioned I wanted to read this. Um, it's really weird. Really, really, really weird. I've read um, Human Acts by Hong Kong and I loved it so much. Like, so clever. One of the best books I've read. Um, I'd love to reread it, actually. But that's about the South Korean, like an uprising in South Korea and sort of rebellion and social justice movements and stuff like that. Whereas this is about, as the title would suggest, vegetarianism. It's very sparsely written, but, but quite beautiful. Um, I hate all of the men in it so far. They're vile, so misogynistic, so have such a voice of authority over their wives. It's, it's hideous, but it's a really interesting look at um, control of your body sexual violence and um I guess like th the link between food and desire um it has really really graphic references to self-harm sexual violence and um like eating disorder stuff so it would be mindful of that but yeah I am liking it. I started to try and read in the hairdressers and it just wasn't a vibe I feel like you really have to concentrate but that's my reading update I'm gonna now film my um <laughs> my boyfriend's saying I'm gonna film my wrap up for the month that's late and then maybe eventually I'll do some university work even though it's like 4 p.m. That's actually very nice. Wait, what do you mean by the side of a volcano? Some of it was recorded by a Javanese volcano. Oh, okay, fair. Oh, I don't know if we're recording. Hi folks, we're making an end of the year book stack for Mr. Tom. So far we've pulled my dark Vanessa, because he like wanted something a bit fucked up, and then he we spoke about her body and other parties in his video, <laughs> and then um, I want him to ring read Kim Jong Young, born nineteen eighty two, which is like a feminist South Korean. It, I mean, it's like faction. It's like semi. It's like auto fiction, but also like backed up with a lot of statistics. Um, what else are you in the mood for? Salt oh, yeah. water. Salt water. I can't believe you haven't read this yet. Yeah, where is it? Sunderland. Yeah, so it's like this girl from Sunderland moves to London to go to uni and you'll find the uni bit's really funny because it's like 
at um, Egg and stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Like party, party vibes, and then she, her grandpa dies, and she goes over to Ireland to like live in his, and like find out about him. It's very lyrical, very poetic. All the chapters are like that. Oh, how regular! Like tiny little vignettes that you have to be in the mood for. What else? Um, Open water. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna love this. I know you're gonna love this. How many do you think you can do by... I mean, we've got a lot of reading coming up at Christmas, haven't we? Well, and especially now that I've finished my proposal, I'm not... I probably have quite a lot of time. Great. Um, this you can read in, like, a night, but I think you would find it interesting. I feel like I should make this a proper video instead of a vlog, but whatever. What else haven't you read this year that you won't be able to take back to the Netherlands? Mm -hmm. Burnt Sugar, are you interested? Yeah, but what's it about again? So that's the like partition. No, that's no. in Poon in India, okay. and um, Doshi's aunties were involved in the Oregon cult. Oh, what's wild, it called? Wild, 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 wild country, yeah. With the bag one. The bag one. <laughs> the real book a winner. No jokes. That's real life. The the book a runner up. Yeah, I feel like you would like this, but again, pretty wacky. Okay, shuggy. No shrugging in. Do not say his name in my house. What else have I read this year that you would want to borrow? They're getting fiction for your, are you getting fiction for Christmas? Did you put any on I'll ask for some, yeah. Oh. There will be some now. Mm, any of it on my TBR that you're interested in? Your TBR is a top two, right? Yeah. Um... What did I force you to do recently, no time? Maybe I'm not. Yep. 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 I mean, I think this is quite a good, quite a good stack. And you'll probably want to read Memorial, Oh, you? yeah. Have you read it? No, I was scared because people were giving it, like, medium reviews. I've just stopped reading reviews of it. Oh, I'd like to read that Yag Yassi one at some point. Yeah, I can bring that, I can pose that to you in a sec. Cool. Cool, is that what we're going for? This yeah. is Tom's end of the year stack, if anyone cares. My end of year stack. Very nice. I deliver to you, my friend. <laughs> Mushroom and avocado. In a toaster? Yeah. Friday treat. Pretty much. No, it's not. <laughs> Guys, I just wanted to make a quick vlog clip and this is what we get. There we go. Okay, tell the people. Tom's reading my dark Vanessa and it wanted his thoughts. Once you finish your toast, babe. Um, it's rude to talk with your mouth off. It is. My mum would be upset. Jokes, my mum doesn't know I make YouTube videos. <laughs> what survives on My Dark Vanessa so far? What page are you on? I'm about 100 pages in. Yeah, and? And I just got to the bit where they had sex for the first time. Um, and it's really weird. Yeah, it's creepy, isn't it? Mm. it? I think it's really clever that Russell wrote it in that way, though, because she obviously wants you to see through the eyes of... Um, the girl, Vanessa. Vanessa, enjoying it, and it's like yeah, you... and like wanting it, to, but also being coerced into doing it. At yeah, the but same time. she's written it in like a very evocative way that like you, it, uh, very, you took, amb very ambiguous, so ambiguous, I, I which I feel it like makes it romantic almost. Yeah, but like you as a reader know that it's obviously paedophilia. But you're sort of like being emotionally manipulated by Vanessa to believe that it's what Vanessa wants. Yeah. And then you really have to think objectively yeah. about it. Well, and I think it's just she gets kind of wrapped up in the idea that he 
espouses that she is this kind of dark soul that is beyond yeah. her years and it's very um manipulative and weird i i also found really interesting like the cultural references that are used throughout it so she's like a big into fiona apple who yeah. writes a lot about um being sexually abused yeah um and, the and like bikini kill um oh. who, so who like really big in the riot girl movement um and yeah, and like when he gives her like Lolita and stuff, I was like, oh, it's uh, so Some clean. people have cr- cr- like <laughs> critiqued that on the writer's part as being like really overwrought, but I feel like that's a very realistic expectation of what would have happened because that book, like, <laughs> categorically what has been used in so many of those situations, do you know what I mean? Like, you can like, um, this um, bookstagram I followed, Book Buddy Reads, she posted about there's like a hashtag like my lolita and there's like all these hashtags on instagram where you can look at them and it is girls underage girls like posing in school uniforms and stuff like a, a big movement especially in like south asia yeah. you, um i was about to say you remember in south in japan but you didn't come to japan maybe but when i went to japan they have all these cafes where um they're like themed i think we've read a book where it has them in uh it was in that i know it was in that stacy dooley documentary yeah right but um yeah, and they dress up, like, one of them's, like, maids or, like, Pokemon or whatever, but there's one where they dress up as schoolgirls, and I remember walking past them and being, like, it's, like, a phenomenon of, yeah. like, the overt sexualization of underage girls, so I feel like the use of Lolita as a cultural marker was completely spot on, even though it does feel cringe. Yeah, when I just feel like, in, in these types of romances, it always seems to be English teachers yes yeah like, i feel like the literature <laughs> no i so i so feel like that it's the li- it's that like troubled soul like i'm a, I, yeah, like, i'm really cool and like i i have these very deep kind of feelings about things and you use these like pieces of art to like disguise all of the shitty things that you want to do yeah and it speaks to that bigger idea of like tortured artists doesn't it and mm. like that you need to be that way like oh i'm not naturally an english teacher i'm a writer I just teach, like, or oh, maybe feel really sick in places. Yeah. But you like, well, not like, but you think it's a good book. It's um, it's compelling to read. Yeah, it's definitely compelling. It's been critiqued for being too much. Like people said, it didn't need to be that graphic to get across the message. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I mean the the sex scenes are very graphic, which is. They are, but I feel like that for someone who, like, if that is, like, with the um, starting sentence, it says, like, for all the people who have had this happen to them and haven't been believed, I feel like it's almost as if we don't want to read about that because it's dirty and it's, like, like, it's just, you know, you don't want to believe that that actually happened. So I feel like to write it in that graphic nature is almost, like, important so that people can feel recognised and, and galvanised in, in their experiences, you know what I mean? Instead of skirting around the issues. Yeah. I don't see a problem personally. I mean, up to everyone to read it if they feel comfortable reading about it, but I don't think it's fair to critique it by saying it's too much, because you're saying to a victim your experience is too much. It's too unsavoury for people to read about. Well, yeah, and I mean, obviously there's that. I, sp- I suppose that's done to kind of provide nuance and again to go back to like ambiguity to just make out like it's i don't know it's a real weird one yeah i think i don't know anything any book with that kind of content that gets that big is always going to have that critique because people associate the best-selling nature of it with something like being quite clean yeah yeah also like you know louis theory talks about like his interest in the macabre and that yeah, kind of idea you. of like voyeuristic voyeuristic tendencies as, as humans and i don't know if it leans into that but i wouldn't say you read it to like to participate in that you're obviously disgusted while you're reading yeah it. but i think i don't know there's also an interesting discussion because it was published there was a memoir published like three years before that um the author said had ripped that my dark vanessa's ripped off the oh, story right. okay there's some interesting debates about that. But yeah, it's a hard one. We'll look forward to your final review. It gets even grosser, to be honest. <laughs> well, anyway, that's our update on My Dark Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you.
you guys requested more Tom content, here he is. I'm smiles your fans. Thank you for your kind words. <laughs> now you can turn off the camera. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so out of breath because the Sainsbury's man just came. The drop of the shopping. I don't know if anyone else this I know this is probably like a UK thing, but like they don't bring plastic bags anymore, which is great. Ten out of ten. But you have to like they bring these crates and you have to throw all the food from the crates into your bags and then carry it up to your flat and you're like, I feel so awkward that the man's there waiting for me. <laughs> so I'm like, hurry, hurry, hurry. But um that's why I'm out of breath, because then I obviously don't want to leave my shopping in the hallway of my flat, so then I carry it all up, like, five bags, and my boyfriend's not here, he's getting a haircut. But anyway, I basically came to sign off the vlog because I finished the vegetarian last night. Mm, it sort of lost me towards the end, to be honest, guys. I don't think, like, this was the kind of book I should be reading right now. Like, I feel like I need straightforward. <laughs> I need characters that I can relate to or, like, see some point in i did really like it at the beginning i liked the vegetarian aspect but it, the narrative leans heavily on dreams and i didn't mention this in my anti tbr tag but i am not a big dream person in books like I, it's like in real life when people tell you their dreams like nine times out of ten i'm not i'm absolutely not interested um and i know i do it to other people <laughs> i literally did it to my boyfriend the other day like i had this really intense dream about polar bears guys and i'm what i'm doing it but i've been dreaming so much about the book interior chinatown i've don't plan on reading it, but if anyone has read it and they liked it, tell me, because maybe the universe is sending me subliminal messages that I need to read it, but anyway, enough about my boring dreams. This book talks a lot about dreams. It talks also a lot about trees. That was creepy, sorry, it was my shopping bag falling over. I'm just not sure it's for me, basically. Um, I would give it like three and a half. I can understand it's like an interesting piece of literature and I enjoyed reading it, but if you were thinking about it, I would... Or if you've read it and you're not sure about Hong Kong, I would recommend Human Acts. I love that so much more, but that's set so much more in the, like, it's rooted in a piece of social justice history. And it's about the uprising in South Korea and the students. And I don't know, I just relate to that a bit more. It did have a fantastical element because there's this part where, like, the bodies are talking to you. But I could sort of get on board with that because the rest of the story was grounded in reality. Whereas this one... I would say was less so. But it does deal with sexual violence really aggressively rape culture and just the men in this book are disgusting basically but i'm glad i read it but i don't think i would like wholeheartedly pass it on to everyone i know sort of thing my mum really liked it weirdly um i'm gonna sign off this vlog here because i've like got a uh, like a busy weekend i like have some family stuff i need to sort out so i thought i'll just tell you what i'm gonna read next i'm gonna read the lying life of adults by El elena ferrante this is my first ferrante i know Finally, my mum will be so happy. <laughs> um, but me, CJ, and like Kira, Grace, Jay, we're all reading this and we're going to talk about it. We thought it should be a nice thing to do in December. So the, I think this, no, Grace has read the Neapolitan series, but I think this is everybody else's first Ferrante, potentially. Um, and I'm really excited because people were saying how much they're loving it already. So that's good. And I feel like it's what I need to like, get into a nitty gritty drama story. Um, so I'm excited about that. I don't know if I'm going to vlog it because, as I said, I have like family stuff to do this weekend. But I will be updating you on Instagram. So all of that being said, thank you so much for tuning into this vlog. I'm sorry that it was quite a boring one. But I will be back in next week with some more vlog content. So thanks for watching. Bye.